Hello, this is my number one podcast from my first lecture. It's not going to be about Photoshop, but it's going to dig in what's one of the most painful problems of a painter, a painter that is trying to understand the computer. So we're going to talk about color. Everybody knows that uh, all color will and the old theories of Ethan, but all the red, yellow, blue based system is applicable only for the old media. Uh, in the old media, we have lots of colors and lots of pigments available for us to use. So actually, you're never going to find a painter that is using only red, yellow, and blue. And okay, you're gonna find a painter that is using that, but uh, he wants to use that, so he cannot do all the colors from that. If we were to put our three primaries on a printer, a pretty ugly image would come out. Why? Because we will not be able to reach a fully black or we will not be able to reach a magenta. Later, another idea came to help this color system, uh, that instead of three, we would have six, two for each, uh, one warmer and one cooler. Something like uh, instead of a red, we'll have two reds, a scarlet and a carmine. Instead of uh, yellow, we'll have a warm one and something like a citrus. Instead of uh, just one blue, we would have an uh, ultramarine and a cyan. All those theories are still accepted more from a psychological point of view, which is fine with the painter because he will not create for scientists. He will, he's not a machine. Uh, he's creating for human beings. So those, uh, all those concepts are still okay and uh, good to use and learn, of course. In a new system, every color and light can be measured. The CAXYZ, it's mapping all the lights and all the wavelengths of colors in nature. Based on this, uh, LAB color space of creating, sometimes they call it CALAB, and L stands for lightness and A and B for the color dimensions. This system is aspiring to perceptual uniformity, being designed to approximate the human vision. LAB space is much larger than the gamut of computer display or printers or even the human vision. But the advantages of using such a space is uh, the conversion between other spaces. It's like, uh, let's say, for example, we would have to use a small set of wings, but we, con we can choose from a larger one and we can change the set every time we want. We still gonna use, let's say, only six inks out of 12. Let's say that we change our mind and wanna switch to another six, we can do that. So that's the advantage of using such a greater gamut. The more conventional uh, color spaces are RGB and CMYK. Uh, one is using the additive mixing color model because it's uh, it's based on light, and the other one it's using a subtractive one because it's uh, based on pigment. The additive process usually uses red, green, and blue light to produce all the other colors. Combining one of these. Uh, with an equal amount produces uh, the additive secondary, like cyan, magenta, and yellow. Combining all three primaries together, combining all RGB, 
uh, in equal intensities produces white, uh, varying the luminosity of each light color it eventually reveals the full gamut of those three lights. Maxwell is actually the father of the additive color because he had uh, some photographer to do to to photograph the same thing three times. First with a red, then with a green, then a, with a blue color filter. Three images were put uh, and projected with three projected each equipped with uh, the corresponding red, green and blue. When brought into register, the uh, three images formed a full color image, thus demonstrating the principles of additive color. The additive color system starts with no light, starts from black. Light sources add wavelengths to make a color. Subtractive color starts with white light. Coloredings, paints or films placed between the viewer and the light source and the reflective surface such as white paper subtract wavelengths from this white and making color. So if uh, for additive we got RGB and they produce CMY in subtractive color system they switch we gonna have CMY which produce RGB Another way of referring to color is by using their properties These properties are three hue being uh, the actual color for example red or green Saturation being the power of a color and lightness being the more light and dark. A schema for this is formed with three vectors. One that is circular from for the hue, one that is horizontal for the saturation and one that is vertical for the lightness. When uh, working with colors, the quick way to access it is by using the color palette. You can open it from window color. It displays the color values and foreground and background uh, using different color models. You can also do a quick pick from the color ramp from uh, that is on the bottom of the palette. An exclamation point in a triangle will appear if the RGB color cannot convert to CMYK so if clipping is gonna occur if uh, it's out of gamut to change the color model used by the palette you can choose uh, a slider options from the color palette menu okay so that is for now thank you very much enjoy yourself take care